So my talk about remote body. My name is Denis Kudryshov. Uh, last year I worked on this project in uh, a remote team in a university. Uh, so under hood, uh, remote debugger is just local debugger. So I actually not built new tool. And probably I could stop here. Uh, but uh, the project which made possible to open local debugger in a remote environment, it's quite interesting. Uh, so here I want to present them. Uh, let's start with uh, is this local debugger. We all know what this user means. But I want to mention uh, how many properties debugger shows and how deep model it's uh, represented. Uh, for example, stack view, retrieve context, uh, uh, process extended context stack uh, with some collection of senders of each context. It shows uh, every context receiving class, selector, and on source code it receives from selected context source code. And on variables view, uh, it asks each context for uh, um, for uh, receiver is variables uh, values and receiver class asked for uh, is variable names uh, and context itself asked for temps and compile method asked for uh, temp names so it's quite a lot of properties uh, on this simplistic schema is just few of them but in practice it's quite more detailed uh, and uh, it's quite easy to build a user interface where you have local integral model. We just ask one object, root object for property, create some sub-view, uh, some sub-widget for it, and open it. Then this sub-widget we extract another set of uh, child properties and create another set of sub-widgets, and so on. So this is how, I guess, small talk v, uh, MVC started. It's very simple, but it's become quite complicated to reuse such uh, interface when mo underlying model is distributed and not, in, not inside local image. And uh, mainstream approach here is provide some REST API or web services, uh, which leads to, to implementation of some kind of data transfer object, which actually duplicates original models. And it's uh, it uh, complicates a lot all this uh, user interface building. And it leads to general problem that if you build user interface for local model, it's quite difficult to reuse it on distributed model. But in small talk, we always have a secret weapon. Uh, maybe it's not too much, uh, it not has too much value. Uh, I talk about remote small talk library. In the most of top libraries, we could open uh, user interface on local model. Uh, we could open user interface on special proxy, which points to remote model. And all underlying communication will be driven uh, by transparent remote team library. And it works quite well, because we, we just open a remote object, or our tools, and it should work. But uh, first problem, that uh, we need to retrieve most of objects by reference itself as proxy because we need to interact with them to produce some actions to change their state on remote side and it leads to huge amount of uh, to, remote rep uh, to, to remote requests uh, between client and server and my first experiment shows that uh, just opening current file debugger on remote uh, process produce almost 800 uh, requests which made it quite slow and I show you I show you it so I just register, so it's server image, and I just register some slow uh, server without any optimizations. Uh, it's server where we will connect our local tools. And on client image, uh, we will connect our slow remote debugger without any optimization. And we enable some logging. 
to, to see this huge amount of references. Uh, remote debugging law is ex execution some remote scripts, uh, but I will uh, talk about it later. So here you see debugger, which actually show remote state. So if we then close and open special tool, it show communication. So you see there is uh, 600 requests just to open this small stack. You can see that most of, rep, uh, most of uh, message sends are going to remote order collection, which could be belongs to many objects, to many properties. Also, remote context itself has huge amount of message sends, load closure, so many. And what to do with this? We just need to improve remote small talk library. And here we go, here we come to, uh, to Seamless. So Seamless was started uh, four years ago by Nicholas Papoulias. Uh, but implemented the design was not enough to provide this kind of flexibility which I need for my proposals. And so I start to, uh, to move it forward, but it leads to complete redesign. Original idea which was implemented by Nicholas was to organize uh, some kind of asynchronous network where sending message sent and receiving message result are independent, uh, uh, independent from each other can be performed simultaneously and the message sent processing should not block any incoming message request or result. So it was done and in the new version of Seamless it separated to a new project Bodies. Uh, Basis provides uh, abstract network player uh, for bidirectional asynchronous communication between clients and servers. So it implements this asynchronous data transfer and provides some equal equality between clients and servers. They could communicate communicate to each other with same way, with same uh, protocol. Only difference that servers usually can't establish connection. Uh, Basis model network and connected peers. Peers represented with first class objects which are managed by concrete network instance. In case of seamless, uh, seamless uh, implement basis network by seamless network. And the reason seeing that uh, peers in basis interact using connect connection pools. So users never uh, use connections directly. So for example, uh, any connection on client points to connection instance on server which belongs to a remote peer instance representing client and otherwise any connection instance on server belong uh, points to connection instance of client which belong to remote peer representing server so I show what it's mean so if you try to look deeply in this debugger, we will see seamless network. <coughs> Inside seamless network, we will see remote peer. Remote peer exactly represents our server uh, application. Server node. And here we see connection pool. And inside connection pool, we have now only one uh, connection. And same exists on server. So if we try to find a network on server, Here we go. Um. 
here, so we would say English connection. And now in connection two, you will see two connections. And then a new connection will be added to passive here on service. So it is now So this is how this idea of remote keys and connection pools implemented. And most important that users not uh, use connections directly, they just send data to remote site and connection established by demand when they need it, when there is no free connections and all these connections are used. So it's connection pool by default. So Simulus implements uh, Bodies Network, and as any Bodies Network implementation, it answers a few questions. Uh, one set of questions is what data network proceeds and how. And Simulus Network proceeds first uh, class requests uh, by executing them on the server side. For example, when a client wants to send message to server object, it sends message send request to remote key. Then on receiver side, uh, <coughs> message sent executed and request return to sender. And this return executed with another request, uh, delivery result request. And as I said, uh, BASIS allows asynchronous data transfer, which means that as soon as we receive a request on server, delivering connection becomes free and it immediately starts to receive new requests. And only when a result of request will be ready, then sender peer will ask for new connection to produce uh, that is sent. Uh, next, next question which uh, defined by Simus network, the largest network is uh, about transfer data. Uh, so this is maybe uh, main part of Simus main part because it's it, this is. This is part of all these optimizations, uh, which I need. So, uh, seamless transfer data in such way that uh, for every uh, internal node of transferred object, it uh, asks special kind of transfer strategy what to do, how to transfer this. Uh, so, for example, we could transfer rectangle uh, in such way that it will be transferred like deep pocket, or we could send rectangle in such way that uh, a region will be transferred as reference and will be represented by proxy on remote side. But corner will be transferred as copy too. Uh, and there is multiple different kind of strategies. It allows to provide some optimization on, on object level and on application level. How to optimizely transfer objects. And uh, this transfer strategy represented by first class object. Most interesting here is uh, transfer by reference with cache property. It allows to define set of properties which should be transferred together with reference. It means that, for example, if you want to transfer class from server to client as reference, on client you will have proxy, and it would specify that you want uh, correct class with uh, cache name property. And when we send the uh, name method uh, name message to class proxy, it will not produce remote message sent because it will use uh, cached value. And this leads uh, to interesting properties that, uh, to interesting possibility uh, that uh, properties itself has own transfer strategy which could, which could has uh, own uh, caching strategy and in extremal case, uh, we could transfer full object graph uh, where on, on uh, sender side we will have all nodes represented by reference, but we will have full integral uh, graph or object graph. And this is exactly what we need for user interface application. We want to specify how many objects we want to get at one request. And here is an example how we configure a remote device for this uh, We specify that compile message should be transferred with selector, uh, method class, 
and so on. And the context should be transferred with receiver, method, and sender. And sender produces cushion. I, I connect normal debugger. So, uh, what I want first to say is that with debugger instance, we could evaluate arbitrary scripts by blocks, which allow some exploration by itself, some arbitrary exploration. So, block executed on remote side. It's compiled locally, but executed on remote side. We could uh, inspect remote objects. Uh, here you see GT inspector on remote objects, where each state is from the server. And we also have special tab which, which shows that we are now on proxy side. And we could execute arbitrary scripts, for example, here by changing uh, remote state. So we see it changes. Uh, so full, uh, almost uh, full semantics of so blocks are supported. This is why I asked Dale from his uh, previous presentation how it works in, in his case. And you could access uh, local objects. Like temps or uh, workplace variables. Guys, could you speak more to the uh, non-local return that went on there? What? Did, did you? Do a non-local return across the machine boundary, or is yeah. that not one? Yes. Yeah. So we can speak a little bit on what's involved. Yeah. Can you describe what's involved in doing that? Uh, it's rather a fact. How do you do it? How do you do it? Ah, I, sh I show you, yeah. Then you just pass it off as if it was nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not nothing, and I wanted to show people that it's not nothing. Idea, idea to just... Uh, send uh, all outer context uh, as value, but home context as special kind of reference proxy. And uh, another thing to uh, to return a local uh, block and not return exception is a special way to sender. And on sender, uh, home context will be materialized as existing context and then it's returned. So, yes, and this script could produce some errors, which I already show, but it's not really interesting. Ah, yes, interesting to see, uh, to see this kind of thing, how many requests we got. So we just allow requests. So from 600 requests to 11, that's huge improvement. 
but let's try to debug some real application like uh, his site counter example. It's of course real application. Here we see classic C site application. And now if we press plus button we can debug it. <coughs> so here you see that uh, remote context object printed specifically with seamless proxy prefix. It could be of course improved, but now we just show that we are on remote side. And we could execute some script, uh, any script. So like we could set up Strange number. Uh, if we install breakpoint again, we could step into <coughs> and now we could step into tutorial and step over. Uh, so yes, we need to restart. Restart for the two. Ah, it's uh, it's part of. Yes, and we could step over. So it's good. Uh, what next? Ah, and this is one small thing which I will need to do on the user interface part is uh, add some GT extension thanks to GT extension because it was very easy to provide these inspectors over remote proxies and to implement do it I need to provide some spe special hook on compiler by defining special class for remote proxies so all do it compiled locally but and then compile method transfer to remote site and there it's executed, which means that uh, remote site doesn't need the uh, compiler. Uh, yes, and another important thing which I want to show is that here on uh, debugger process we don't have any C site. So from our tools uh, image we could browse uh, remote uh, servers, we don't need source code for we could debug, yes, browser is not implemented yet. Okay, and now some set of tools, uh, some projects which uh, drive all this communication with this logic. So I implement special uh, optimized serializer specifically for similar. So it's called TOST as abbreviation from transit. Transient object transport. Transient means uh, that it's not supposed to be used for persistence. It's just need to do serialize and materialize, and that's all. Uh, because it's not provide any meta information for object migration or versioning. Uh, this information was in full, and it provides some drawbacks like very huge, uh, very huge, um, very huge size of data packets for small objects. And idea of those realizers is just put uh, it, it just convert uh, given objects to stream of references, uh, a stream of inst variables and indexed variables, and just put it directly on stream step by step with uh, Brad's first approach. Uh, all duplicated objects are input by stream position, which helps with some kind of optimization. Substitutions are supported. Uh, and also there is some compact uh, encoding for what I say well-known objects which allow to, to encode some, some object with just one byte. And those realizers and seamless produce uh, many optimization like FUIL, for example, 
first version of Simulus was based on fuel and it was required a uh, two-step traver object traversal, one for fuel analysis stage and another for Simulus itself to build substitution graph uh, map. And also TOS Realizer opens many, many possibilities for following for, for next future improvements. And TOS Realizer based on Object Traveler, it's another project which provides uh, streaming capabilities over object graphs uh, by native preferences like <coughs> variables and indexed tails. It supports cyclic object graphs. It's allow uh, injecting some external objects uh, into a given object stream. It supports replacing references uh, during generation and provides some nice features uh, on top of this. And last tool is object statistics which is what you saw on this, on this tool. Yes, now when we change some methods, the Ubuntu will produce uh, many, many messages, so it takes time to collect it. Because collection makes some remote sense to kill open soon. So yes, here you see exactly these two object statistics uh, with uh, special GT extension to present all this information. So we, uh, so object statistics allow to define set of metrics and to look at them from the different dimensions from in, in object space. For example, we could see uh, in dimension of message sent request how many uh, how many remote request was received by particular receivers, and in dimension of these receivers we could see how many uh, request was uh, was sent with particular selector, and we see not only request count but uh, all, all defined set of metrics. It allows to implement, uh, to improve our profilers a lot, and there is some example method uh, which show uh, classic code profiler, but for seamless, but for seamless statistics is defined like this. So count message as, uh, as some set of metrics to count requests in each direction, to count how many different receivers request uh, messages, how many uh, request was sent on server to client and in opposite direction. And each dimension defined with such G structure, so we define that we want uh, to see our metrics in dimension of request and then inside this each request in dimension of selector and in, re in reverse order in each dimension of selector to see uh, all metrics in dimension of receiver. It's a low, very nice statistic. Uh, oh yes, you see here there is also messages. <coughs> oh yes, it's, it's and uh, for future work, most in, most interesting part is produce uh, remote browser, and I will do this more more optimization, better presentation, and one important technical uh, part is to implement distributed garbage collection because now all these distributed objects are not collected by anybody. Uh, in case of uh, debugger, I produce special uh, custom method which you could use uh, to clean everything. So you could use debugger without this automatic damage collection. That's all.